Shalom, 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 shalom. This is your brother Yael Ezra Ben Levi coming at you again for another quick video. I'm not going to be before you long, but um, I just want to share with you something that I believe many of you either do not know or you simply choose to overlook what the text plainly says or you just feel comfortable interpreting it in a way where you are at peace with it. Now I want to entitle this called It's Not As Bad As It Seems. Now I want to come out of Jeremiah chapter 31. I will be coming, I will be um doing this from the King James Version of the Bible. And the only reason I choose to come out of the King James because many of my people and there's simply many people love the King James and they deem it to be the word of God. They think it's the most accurate translation. To follow. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Jeremiah chapter 31, starting at verse 29. I know many of you love to start at verse 31, but let's start at verse 39. In those days, they shall say no more. The father have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Why start there? Because Jehovah is trying to stop this concept that those seeking in, that someone else is going to be punished for your sin. Someone else is going to die in your stead. Yehoah was nipping that at the butt. And he does it actually in several places in the Tanakh. But many people just choose to dust right over it. Now, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yehoah, that I will make a new covenant with the world. It doesn't say that. Yet so many people act like it does. Behold, the day comes, saith Yehovah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So Yehovah makes it perfectly clear who this new covenant or this renewing of the covenant is made with. It's made with Israel. Even though Israel was divided into two kingdoms at the time, Yehovah is making it perfectly clear he is talking about the nation of Israel, the Israelites, the Hebrews. 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yehoah. Now, you see that Yehoah, this agreement they made was broke. What was the agreement? That the Israelites made. That's something that people need to look into. That's all covenant means. Is an agreement. So we need to learn further. What is the agreement? That's your homework. What was the covenant? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. In the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the. Land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Jehovah. But this shall be the covenant, remember, uh, agreement, that I will make with the house of Israel. Not the, not the world, not the nations, with Israel. After those days, saith Jehovah, I will put my law. Remember, the word there is Torah. Torah means teachings and instructions. It does not mean law. It literally means instructions teachings 
and I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So this is one thing people need to understand real quickly. Some people think in this new covenant, there will be no law, that the law will be invalid. It will be done away, but that's not what the text say. It basically says it will, that law, that Torah, that instructions will be written in your mind. It will be in your heart. He didn't say he was doing away with it. He took it off of um, stone. He took it off of parchment and he said, I will write it in you. Not that he would do away with it. Let's read it again. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Jehovah, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Hearts, the mind. And will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Jehovah. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahuwah. Now, I know many of my Christian brothers and sisters, even some Messianic brothers and sisters, that say we are in the new covenant now. While they're literally out there on the street telling people to know Yahuwah, telling their own people to know Yahuwah. When we plainly see when we're in that new covenant, that it will not be it will not be needed why let's read it again and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying no Jehovah, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them why will you be on the street corner telling people to know someone who they already know that would be a waste of time and we can see when we're under the new covenant during that time of the new covenant, there will be no need to try to tell our people to know Yehoah, to know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because Yehoah has made it perfectly clear that they will all know him. He said, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, say of Yehoah, for I will forgive their iniquities and I will remember their sin no more. Now, just based on what I have read so far, and the many Christians love to go to this passage saying this is a prophecy about the Mashiach and the new covenant that he brought. But anywhere with what I just read, do you hear anything about a Mashiach? Do you hear anything about a cross? Do you hear anything about the blood? And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just being straightforward and to the point. Since they say this is about Mashiach, saying this is about the covenant he instituted, you will think it was you would have thought it would have said certain things to show that is true. But it does the very opposite. It does the hint or point to Yeshua in any way. Um, verse 13. Thus saith Yehoah, which giveth the sun for a light by day and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves therefore roar. Jehovah host is his name. Listen to this now. It's important. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Jehovah, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So as you can see, the sun is still doing its job. The moon and the stars are still doing its job. So I guess in other words, Yehovah is making it perfectly clear that Israel is still a nation before him. We did not get replaced by Christians. Just, you know, putting it out there. 37. Thus saith Yehovah, if heaven can, um, thus saith Yehovah, if heaven can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seas of Israel 
for all that they have done, saith Yehoah. Well, we can't measure the space. We don't know the depths of measurements of the earth beneath. So I guess the seed of Israel has not been cast off. So this great concept of the great, um, this re re replacement theology is a lie. The chosen of Jehovah has not been replaced with another. We are still his nation. We are still his people. So this new covenant is not speaking in regard to the nations this is talking about the nation excuse me the nation of israel period but fear not remember i said it's not as bad as it appear it's not as bad as it seems because there is a place for the nations for the non-israelites let's go to isaiah 56 Isaiah 56 verse 1 Thus saith Jehovah keep ye judgment and do justice for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil now there's many Christians that feel they should not be honoring the Sabbath, the Shabbat. But we see it said, blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. So you can honor the Sabbath, even though you're not an Israelite. Verse three. Neither let the son of the stranger, the stranger, the gear, the, those that are foreigners, non-Israelites, that has joined themselves to Yehoah. Now you see that there. That have joined themselves to Yehoah. It doesn't say who, who joined themselves to the Mashiach. It says who joined themselves to Yehoah. Speak saying, Yehoah has utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith Yehoah unto the eunuch that keepeth my Sabbath. Once again, we see Yehoah is keep stressing this importance of the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath. And these are not Israelites that it's referring to. Now, I know many would disagree with me because I know some Israelites that say all of this is still referring to. To Israelites. That's not my mindset. That's not my understanding of when I see this text. Just wanted to put that out there. Verse 5. Now let me read 4 again. For thus saith Jehovah unto the eunuch that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and daughters, and I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Every man will I bring, excuse me, even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offering, offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people all people not just the israelites but all people that do the things he said doing here honor the sabbath refrain from doing that which is evil for doing that which is contrary to torah there's something to think about The um verse eight, the Lord God, or the Lord Yehoah, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel. Yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. Now, 
I want to shed some light on verse 8 because when you go into the Hebrew and you look at the Hebrew um, translations, it don't say anything about gathering others to him. It say about gathering those and gathering more. It don't say anything about gathering to him and bringing more to him. Now, I know many will say this is referring to the Mashiach. I have no problem with that because we know the Mashiach will be instrumental in the gathering of the people, the judging of the nations, and in the rebuilding of the temple. But I just want to let it know in the Hebrew, it doesn't say that. So let you know Yehovah is gathering. And he will also gather those with those that have already been gathered. So those are the nations, people of the nations and around the world. Remember, I told you it's not as bad as it appears. Even though the new covenant is not referring to you, the new covenant is referring to the house of Israel, the house of Judah. In other words, the Israelites, the nation of Israel. But Yehoah have not forgot about you. Yehoah made a way. So, don't hang your head because the new covenant is not about you. Yehovah have not forgot. It's just that the new covenant is referring to the nation of Israel and no other. But you can still come to Yehovah. You can still pray unto him, um, have a relationship with him, and walk according to the righteous path that he has established. But just know, according to Jeremiah chapter 31, the new covenant is not about you. And that's nothing to get upset about because Jehovah still made a way for you. He still has an invitation for you to come. Peace.